I'll ask you to locate Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And uh, glory to God. And then we're going to do our theme song for this series. Amen. Uh, we're in the midst of the series. What's the series entitled? Following our leader, lightning our load. Amen. 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 I thought somebody got the gift. <laughs> I couldn't understand what we all were saying, but maybe. Following our leader, lightning our load, right? Amen. And we're going to sing that little theme song in a minute, but, but we want us to concentrate on this word first. Amen. Concentrate on this, because this is the, 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 the text undergirding for for the for the sermon amen we gotta be word people we gotta be word people so we want everybody amen amen if we've located psalm 27 amen amen bless the lord on so, amen. Those of you who've located it, let's begin reading it together. Psalm 27, may we read. The Lord is my light, everybody, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want no music right now, please, y'all. Just want everybody to read. Amen. Out of all them brothers out there, I'll be hearing all oh, here a little more bass. Amen. All right, let's start at verse 1 again. Let's read. The Lord is the light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. 
when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And then from the New Testament, you probably know it by heart, John chapter 10 and verse 10. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, as we get ready to sing the little song now, we're gathering on this subject today. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? And uh, if you if you would entertain a subtitle. I offer this for your consideration. Leave that thief alone. <laughs> Whom shall I fear is our title, our subject. And the subtitle, subsubject. Leave that thief. Alone, His agenda has already been explained in John 10.10. 10. The thief comes but for to steal, kill, this. leave that thief alone. Amen? All right, now I know y'all got, got this little song we learned last week. Amen, 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 amen. Why y'all going to stand? We're going to. Kind of make it kind of official. It's our anthem for the month. And hopefully it'll be your anthem for life. Yeah, it's up on the screen. Some of y'all wrote the words down. That's good. That's what I like to do. Mm -mm. All in unison now. Let's go. Sing it. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it This trial you're going through God's gonna show you what to do You can make it You better talk to yourself Oh yeah Hallelujah Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost massage your heart. Let him massage your heart. Let him put some salve on your wound. Hallelujah. You've been wounded? Yeah. I don't care what's going wrong. God is not going to let that thing last for so long. 
I'm here to tell some folk and tell myself too. Even if you think you can't get over it, God will help you to get beyond it. Glory to God. He'll get you to the point where you can remember it, but it won't hurt like it used to hurt. It won't depress you like it used to depress you. It won't make you sick like it used to make you sick. Glory to God. You can make it. You can make it. You can make this try you're going through. God's gonna show you what to do. You can make it. <laughs> you can make it. Unison, y'all. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing. Need your attention, fellas. You can make. Some of us are quiet and reserved. And you've been suffering silently. But I send the same encouragement to you. This trial. You're going through. God, the devil sent it to take you out and take you under. But God's going to show you what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. You can make. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all be seated. Receive that encouragement in the Holy Ghost. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. It's for you. It is for you. I don't care what's going on. I know. The enemy will speak to some of us and he'll say, yeah, I know you, you made it through that, you made it through that, but you ain't never had to go through this. Yeah. If you speak really proper, he'll speak really proper to you. If you speak, you know, perfect broken English, he'll speak that to you. Because he just wants to discourage you. You can't make it. God when you got a witness on the inside in spite of what's going on on the outside you got a witness on the inside say oh yeah you. he will show you what to do so bless the Lord um, whom shall I fear and the subtitle is what? Leave that thief alone. Now last week we began and our subject last week was I'm done with that. I'm done with that. Amen. I am done with that. Today, whom shall I fear? And if you have not, you will begin to see a common thread in all of these messages. They are critical messages because they address 
the devil's attempt to foster and encourage dysfunction in our lives. Amen? If the truth were told, many people, even the saints of the Most High God, are really just putting the best on the outside. But toe up from the floor on the inside. Because there's some major dysfunction in our lives. Amen. Dysfunctions won't stop our lives immediately. Their biggest threat is affecting adversely the quality of life. So I don't care if you live, just be miserable. I don't care if you live, just worry all the time. I don't care if you live, just stay depressed. I don't care if you live, but, but keep thinking that you're insufficient. Something wrong with you. So he encourages dysfunction. Amen. Some dis dysfunctions we kind of write off as generational curses. N not to be denied and refuted and rebutted, but we just take them as the way it is. Great grandpa did that. And grandpa did that. Daddy was cool with his stuff, but daddy did it too. So I guess. Over the dysfunction. The enemy engenders in the lives of believers. Because if he can get us caught in a negative warp then we can't maximize affecting and doing the will of God. We can't really minister because we're in the warp. We can have intentions to minister, but the warp can get so consuming that you know, I know I'm supposed to attend this meeting about doing this ministry, but Lord, I'm, I'm just so depressed right now. I, I know I need to be in rehearsal. I ain't been there for six weeks, but I'm so consumed right now. He even doesn't mind us covering up the dysfunction. He will encourage you to do things you like so it'll look like you're happy. He'll send you on vacation, dysfunctional, and bring you home. But you'll think it must be all right because I did get to go. This is a trick of the enemy. Are we communicating? Oh, man. And so, we, we handled the need to forgive folk. Amen. And to not live prisoners to an unforgiving spirit. Amen. Today, the area the Holy Ghost is, is, is taking out of us today 
is a little more insidious and a little more tricky. Because if I hadn't started preaching and just sent out a, to get, take a poll among worshipers today, I'm sure everybody here would say, God is first in my life. God is first the pastor. Why? Why would you need to even ask a question like that? Isn't it obvious? I'm in the church sitting up here in this hot robe. Isn't it obvious that God is first in my life? I'm on the deacon seat. I'm, I'm ushering today. I'm doing the sat. Isn't it obvious? I left my bed. And lost an hour last night. Isn't it obvious? That God is first. In my life. And I will quickly retort. No, it ain't obvious. What's obvious is that you got a cosmetic veneer that looks good. You looking the part. You sounding the part, but God sent you up in here and over these airwaves and there. He got you where he got you so that he can cut out. That's that dysfunction of having other gods before him. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about Buddha, nobody else. I'm talking about more familiar gods. Amen. I'm talking about the small G-O-D-S. With regular names. And addresses. Many of them live at our address. But God knows. He is not first. Because we put that person ahead of God. Lord have mercy. I know there's something about our sinful nature that that makes us feel good when it seems that there's somebody who cannot live without us. If you want a psychological or a therapeutic Handle for this is called codependency. Hello. Now, before you write that letter to me in your mind that I ain't going to read, there is healthy codependency. 
A husband and a wife ought to have healthy reliance. Really good friends ought to have healthy. Come on, somebody. We used to sing the song, I need you. You need me. We're all part of God's body. What does all say? Agree with me. We're all part of. It is that you are important to me. I need you to survive. Now that's about the worst line in the song. It's a nice song. But saints, the codependency that the Holy Ghost is addressing today, listen to me. Young people, y'all need to listen. Some of y'all at the point where you're going to try to be getting little girlfriends and boyfriends. And you you 12. And just learn the spell fight. And you want to fight somebody. Because they looking at your girlfriend about girls fight just as fast as boys. So sometimes faster. Amen. That's why they don't wear frocks too much. Ask your mama what a frock is when you get home. <laughs> your grandmama. Your mama probably don't know either. Uh, but before you go fool, thinking you can own somebody, before you start breathing, she better be where I told her to be when I tell her to be there. With your dumb self, son. He can know what he want to do. But he don't want me to ring his number. Let me tell you something. He'll change his number before you ring it. So, But we cultivate these unhealthy obsessions. Amen. 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 So so this 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 codependency is characterized by excessive somebody say excessive emotional or psychological reliance on somebody else. Now I know I'm Walking through some deep water. But, and this, if you grab this, you can go home and pray over it. And the Holy Ghost can continue to minister to you. And help you and me understand why we are wired the way we are. Amen. Excessive. You see, when, when you start getting obsessive with people, usually you hook up with somebody <laughs> who is a manipulator. Amen. Oh, Lord. Y'all, this is so important. And you can get two really 
bad hookups in a house. One bad hookup is two codependent people. Amen. They're like Siamese twins. You go into the bathroom? Okay, I'm going to sit by the door. I'm going to be in here for a while. I don't mind. I'm going to sit right here by the door. Amen. Engrossed in a movie on TV. Where are you going? I'm going on. Okay, I'm, I'll see that later. I'm going on the porch with you. I'm going. You going? How long you going to be going? I'm going to be going 50 minutes, 15 and a half minutes. Where you at? Them fools coming to the altar getting married and they won't take good counseling because they, they are so warped until they've already decided before the first counseling uh, appointment that you, all they're doing is jumping through these hoops so you can go in and marry them. It's disaster. That one of them, too excessively Obsessed people. I just, we just, I just love people. I just, you ain't got no other friends. The one and a half friends you got can't stand being around you. I know this, these shoes fitting real tight on somebody's foot right now. But the Holy Ghost going to help you. The other really explosive combination is a codependent person and a narcissist. Because you can't ever satisfy that narcissist. You can't ever. Amen. If you die, they're going to slap you because you should, you should die again for them. What? <laughs> this real. And when you get a codependent person feeding into somebody who is never satisfied. Y'all see why all these divorce court shows are popping up on TV. I counsel premarital and marital married people that you need to have a blessed, sanctified life together. And in that life, you also need to have aspects of life that are yours. We have perverted teaching the two become one. And what we are basically saying, you take two obelisks and you end up with a monolith. That is not true. You become one in your passion for Christ. You become one to see the mission of God accomplished. But you are two individuals. If, if you like opera, I ain't got to like opera, but I'll buy your ticket to the opera. And I might go once in a while, but I ain't going all the time because they ain't my cup of tea. I like hillbilly music. <laughs> you don't love me. What do you mean I don't love you? Because you won't come up. Let me give you some wonderful counseling right now. Learn how to tell them kind of people Get a life. Amen. Why you got to mind who you marry? And even when you're careful, sometimes you get hooked up with these fools. You get hung up on that exterior. Ex 
excessive. Excessive. I, I, I live to please you. Now, all right. I'm going to let some of y'all help somebody. Anybody other than me has gained a measure of deliverance from codependency. Oh, I tell the truth and shame the devil. Uh-huh. Yeah, and some of y'all whose hands didn't go up. You digging down that seat. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I can't. Oh, Jesus. I know and the Lord know you were going fool because you lived to please somebody and they jerked your chains and they made you do what you didn't want to do. They made you act like you didn't want to act. But you were codependent. You thought your life was defined by doing for them. You quit doing for yourself and you long time ago quit doing for the Lord. glad y'all danced already. But I tell you when you dance again, you dance and you get deliverance. You dance when, you, when, you really, when the Holy Ghost gets through to you that you need to stop carrying the weight of pleasing other people. Because when you are obsessed with pleasing them, they become your God. Some of y'all don't tithe. Forget about offering. You don't tithe to our God because you tithe to that God. You got to buy them something all the time. Because buying them something show how much you love them. I got, I, got, I got a little something for you. I got a little something for you. You don't never get nothing. I got a little something for you. Get, come on, you ain't going to smile. You ain't going to smile. <laughs> That's one carrot. I wanted two carrots. Oh, Lord, let me go back to the store. Cut that one in two pieces. Then you got two pieces of carrot. <laughs> Y'all, I'm really, I hope this helping somebody. I know you might not want to admit in public. Amen. Because we don't like, we don't like acknowledging these kinds of things that hold us hostage. Some of y'all can't come to church good. Going down there, you got to go see dope. You better see Jesus. <laughs> dope are dead just like you. <laughs> you better see Jesus. <laughs> time church over. You got seven minutes to be home. You don't fellowship. You don't say hey. You don't say how you doing. You don't do something. But you gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Move on, move, 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 move. Bumping people. Run. I'm trying to diagnose you. You sick? Hallelujah. Too many saints are caught up in situations where they believe they cannot live without certain people. Amen. 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 And then we become foolish just trying to Hold on. So seeing them every day becomes seeing them every third day. But we hold on. Seeing them every third day becomes seeing them once a week. But we hold on. Burn it down. 
That's an awesome. Oh, there's an altar in your life that needs to come down. There's an altar. Now, when you get delivered from codependency, the last thing you need to do is look to the person you're obsessing over to affirm your deliverance. Because they love you to the extent they can use you. To the extent they can control you. To the extent they can yank your, your chain. To the extent they can access your... They don't love you. They don't even know you. Because the conversations are not, a, are not reciprocal. You learn in them and they learn in you. It's always one side. You don't know me. You don't know. Baby, it'll take 15 people to know you with your mix up self. I know there's a couple people in here who ain't liking this right now. Because I'm talking real bad about you. I, But I got to please the Lord now. I, ain't, I done come too far. I ain't scared to preach. And I ain't scared to teach. So, the controller and the one obsessed with being controlled both need deliverance. Amen. 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 Um, when we were growing up, um, mama, mama, my mom was a terrifically intelligent and beautiful woman, but she didn't work outside the home when we were growing up. That, that's the way they did it. Amen. So four, between 4 and 4.30 in the morning, pots were making noise. And we had hot breakfast. When we got home, mama was home. When my daddy got home, his food, by the time he walked in, it wasn't on the table, by the time he walked in and went to the bathroom, his food was on the table. Clothes on the line, scars getting um, medicated, Counseling us with all our arguments among one another. Even if the counsel was, I'm going to cut all of y'all behind. <laughs> now, is it reasonable for me? Because I grew up in that pattern. Mama did, did work, she did, she did, she, besides working in the house, and I think she was enjoying it when she worked other jobs, because that wasn't as hard. Being a homemaker ain't no, not when you do it right. Not a home taker, a homemaker. But now, my spouse, Work out of town and real long. You think I'm a busy so special? <laughs> that I'm gonna walk in the house and say something like, "Why ain't my dinner on the table?" Brothers, all I'm saying is, you got to get rid of that caveman mentality. You cannot tell her in one breath, look, you got to work because we need your money to help pay these bills for this mortgage that I can't pay by myself and these other expenses. You can't tell her you got to work and turn around and say, you got to have my food, hot food fixed when I walk in the door. 
You, it's a simple solution. Live within your means. Stay out the store, son. Hunt the bargains. Conversely, the Bible says the home is your arena, sister. You cannot ignore your home in the name of anything else. Just, just kick it to the curb and think God going to be pleased with the outcome. What do you do? You find ways. Crock-Pot was a good thing. That means you could cook overnight what you wanted for the next day, right? And then just heat it up when you got night. You can find ways. Codependency. Codependency. I want my food. <laughs> you're going to get that whole pot of string beans in your face. That's what you're going to get. It don't go like that no more. <laughs> Conversely, again, you cannot castrate him in the den, sister, and insist on having Tarzan in the bedroom. If you, if you castrate him in the den, he's going to be castrated when you get in the bedroom. Don't worry, I got about 15 amens I brought with me. Because I knew some of this was going to get quiet up in here. Codependency. Do we see the picture? Excessive. Over the top. Way too much. Amen. Dependence on somebody else. So we want them to depend on us. The codependent person wants to be needed. Needs to be needed. So users just what happens in that? Scenario. We fear the user leaving us and have no regard for God Almighty having stepped aside a long time ago. You can't leave me. You can't. Don't leave nothing because you ain't coming back. I ain't changing them locks tomorrow. I'm changing them. Y'all, this thing is real. It's real. We've made gods out of these people. We worship them. They get our money. They get our time. They get our energy. Amen. And all we get is the next list of things they want and need and insist on having. It is sick. And it is unhealthy. And it is ungodly. Follow the leader. And lighten your load. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You telling me I need to leave my, my boo? I don't hear boo no time on the regular but Halloween. <laughs> boo. 
That what you trying to hold on to? Boo! <laughs> I know y'all gonna talk bad about me, but when the dust settles, you're gonna find that ain't nothing but truth up in here. I don't mind the shouting, I don't mind the dancing, but when you're dancing because you're covering up that codependency. When you're shouting because you're trying to numb the pain of knowing you're being used, but you can't get off that merry-go-round, then that becomes the Lord's affair. And, and as a, a spiritual overseer, my affair. So what, what are we going to do since you know so much? See, that what kind of trouble me about you. You know so much. Let me tell you, if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, I'd be just dumb. But I depend on the Holy Ghost. I depend on him to speak to me. And to make understandable those things that I don't understand. And to empower me to effectively articulate so that the people of God can understand and cleave to the truth of the word of God. As, as I kind of turn the corner and head on home, I charge older codependent people. Stop counseling your children and grandchildren to do it like you did it. You've been miserable for 65 or 70 years and you setting them up to walk in that same kind of misery. The devil is a liar. Your children need to be free. They don't need to live under that same kind of bondage. Speak the truth to them. God has gotten you to the place where you can speak the truth and you ain't going to lose nothing. Amen. If you still got somebody living, they can't walk out because they can't walk. So go on and tell the truth. codependent people if you decide to stay in bondage what you're doing is you're raising up your children and those little grands to see that that's how they're supposed to live used to sing a whole lot that old song that said oh freedom oh freedom oh freedom over me and before I be a slave I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be I know you think you can't function outside of that system. But the Holy Ghost says you can. How do I do that, Pastor? Be who the word said. The Lord is my light. And my salvation. And when that codependent that that you 
who's a, who's abused your codependency says, well, 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 then what you need to do is you need to get God to do what I've been doing. Done, done, and done. Because the abuser can't stand to see you learn how to stand up. Think for yourself. Pray for yourself. Re realize you have an identity in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all even know who God purposed you to be because you lived decades being who that scoundrel wanted you to be. Scoundrel being male or female. Deliverance is at hand, is imminent, is in the house. You can have it if you want it. Or you can dance for 30 more years trying to numb the pain. But this kind of pain, you can't dance away. When you get through dancing, you're just tired, but you're still codependent. unhealthy obsession I had a preacher tell me one time he, he have to be careful what he preach around Thanksgiving and Christmas because he don't want to stop people from giving to him I said what that is not my problem I ain't got no anointing for that if telling somebody the truth Mean that they going to shut up their bowels of compassion, then I hope God lock them up real good. Because I'm going to make it with or without that. God will make a way. I done told y'all, if God got to send a buzzard from Timbuktu with a blessing, he will get to his saints what he wants them to have. Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Shall I fear the one who is jerking my chain? Shall I fear the one who thinks that I can't live without them? Shall I fear the one whom I have thought I couldn't live without? Shall I fear them? Some of y'all looking kind of iffy. I really want to ask you what a matter. What's the matter? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, and they can call you, they can say that they're in love with you, but when they use you like that, they don't love you. They love what you do. They do not love you. They don't even know you. When they came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Jump on, verse 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Desire to be in the presence of God. So you've been codependent, you've been hung up, you've been obsessed with pleasing some person or some persons. Desire to be in the presence of the Lord. In your own house, in your apartment, wherever you are, desire to be in the presence of the Lord. Fill your atmosphere with the music and the sayings and the teachings that will, that will feed your spirit. Desire to be in the house of the Lord. You cannot watch all these crazy shows on TV that celebrate victimization. You can't stay on that kind of... You got to watch what celebrates deliverance.
to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. In time of trouble, he'll hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his, I see of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set my foot, set me up upon a rock. Now shall my head be lifted up above. Look at deliverance. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. I'm telling you, you can have your head lifted above that circumstance right here, right now. In your living room, in your den, in your office space, in that jail cell, in that hospital room. When my father and mother, verse 10 says, forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. When my father and mother can do me no good. When my father and mother have to say, baby, I've done all I can do. That's, that's your father and your mom. That ain't God. That's your father and your mom. And sometimes God will situate it so they cannot do so you can look past them to him. Teach me that way, O oh Lord. Lead me in a plain, plain path. Deliver me not over to my enemies. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And those who've been delivered from any measure of codependency ought to say, thank you, God. I lived long enough to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I didn't have to wait for sweet Beulah land. I didn't have to wait for over there somewhere. The Lord allowed me to taste and see some of his goodness in the land of the living. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. The Lord is addressing your lack of trust in yourself right now. You think you can't make it. I'm going to tell you, maybe you've been so busy taking care of that user that you haven't cultivated your gifts. So you need to start praying to the Lord. Lord, teach me who I am. Teach me the giftedness you put in me. If you taught me to be a cookie maker, I'm going to be the best cookie maker in the state. I'm going to have people coming from across the nation to get my cookies, Lord. Just anoint me to know myself and to walk in my anointing. Maybe you quit school. Because your abuser was feeling insecure about you getting educated. But God can bless you. You got to let the Lord deliver you from having poor self-esteem. From, from fearing being abandoned. Amen. There are some people in this building and, and, and out there right now who can say, you know one thing? I thought I was going to go crazy when so-and-so left me. But the Lord has turned my tears of sadness into tears of joy. I was asking, what am I going to do? I'm going to be too ashamed to go outside. <laughs> Man, what are you talking about? Abandon? I'm telling you. Y'all don't know what to do. If you're going to stay with that person, even after your deliverance, at least do this. Go buy a big suitcase and just put it in the room, put it in the closet. And when they ask you what that's for, you tell them that's to help you pack. I want you to know in advance, I expect you to leave. So I got the suitcase to help you pack so you won't have no reason to come back here. I mean, but I am tired of seeing the people of God suffer under this demonic influence by folk who mean you no good. Change your phone number. 
I ain't going to change my, I had this number. Change your phone number. What they going to say? So you had to change your phone number, huh? Uh-huh. Well, well, why you had to do that? Uh-huh. Oh, well, you ain't going to give it to me. Uh-huh. I'm trying to help y'all now. You need for approval. Your true beauty hasn't come forward because you were too busy trying to be what they call beautiful. The Lord said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. How dare another person? I know, I know this, this, this ain't really exciting running, jump across the pews thing. But this is sound spiritual food right here. Unhealthy dependence. And when you, when you get delivered from that, don't run and grab. Somebody else messes up. I guess I, guess I could have done something to help it. I guess I could have done something. Stop! That person did what they chose to do and they did it because they knew you were going to take responsibility. Stop it! You mean that's all you worth? All you worth? Mom, sis, grandma, all you worth? Is a few dollars and a pack of neck bone. That's all you worth. <sighs> Jot these down. These are some scriptures that specific tell us fear them not. Fear them not. Jot these down. I'm done. Keep on playing. Joshua 8 and 1. Joshua 10 and 8. Joshua 8 and 1. Joshua 10 and 8. Joshua 10 and 25. Judges 6 and 10. I know. I know I'm saying a lot. Do Use your sword hand. Just put the first two letters of the book. Amen. 1 Samuel 15 and 14. Proverbs 29, 25. Isaiah 41, 14. Right, drop these down. These are some scriptures that tell us to fear God. We've been fearing them because we were codependent. Fear them not. They use your fear to control you. Fear God. Joshua 24 and 14. First, excuse me, 2 Samuel 12 and 14. Job 28, 28. Psalm 33 and 8. Psalm 34 and 7. Psalm 103, 17. Psalm 111, verse 10. Proverbs 1, 7, 9, 10. Proverbs 14 and 27. Proverbs 15 and 16 and Acts 9 and 31. Acts 9 and 31. That's just to give you some food. Amen. Every day, eat some of the fear not. 
and eat some of the fear. Every day, I don't need to be afraid of them. I do fear, I do reverence, I do respect the Lord. I do worship the Lord. I don't worship no person. Following your leader, lightning your load. Now, if these instructions have been embraced today, some people in this building and countless people over the airwaves ought to be feeling lighter right now. I'm talking to the people who've been codependent and trying to satisfy people. And I'm talking also to the people who've been manipulating the codependent people. You ought to feel some deliverance too. You sitting where you don't belong. It won't always be like this. The Lord is perfecting concerning. There you go. And sooner or later, it'll turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. It won't always help me with the words. It won't always be like this. What's the next one? God. God will perfect concerning sooner. Or later, we talking about sooner, it'll turn in my favor. What's it doing? It's turning around for me. One more time, one more time. Tell yourself, it won't always be. I ain't leaving out of this building the way I came in today. The Lord will perfect that concerning and sooner or later today it'll turn in my favor What's he gonna do? It's turning around around for me around Around for me, around for me, around for me, singing around, yeah, 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 around for me, around for me, it's turning. On well, my job and my home and my neighborhood with my family. It won't always make a declaration. It won't always be like the Lord will perfect that concerning sooner. Wherever this demon has manifested itself, I'm not asking you to come and tell me your business. Amen. But if you want to make a declaration today, whether it's in my home, on my job, in my neighborhood, in my, with my blood relatives, in other relationships, if something has, has had me tied down, I am declaring this as my day of independence. Amen. If you just want to come to the altar, we'll join you in prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.
Now, look, the last thing, if you need to come to the altar, the last thing you need to do is look around and see who else coming. You need to come, not them. For me, around, around. I've been worrying about this thing, but God is... <laughs> Do that one again. Do it again. Around. I've been obsessing with it. I've been worried about it. I've been depressed about it. But today something's happening in my spirit. And I believe God is. Around. In my health. In my mind, around, around, around. Yeah, that's what he's doing. It. is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Lord, I've lost too much time. I've lost too much energy. I've gotten too drained trying to make folk understand, trying to make folk be pleased, trying to make folk accept. Lord, I, I've, I've lost my place trying to make them be alright. That was my fault. I did it, Lord, but I'm declaring my freedom from that. I'm declaring my independence from that codependent relationship. I'm following Jesus. When Jesus chose his 12 disciples, he knew one would betray him, but he knew the other 11 plus one new one would be the nucleus of the world. So he had to choose them Realizing that they could handle him being gone. They didn't need Jesus around them all the time. He had to leave them. Around. Some of us have loved ones for whom we need to pray now. We've got, whether it's children, grandchildren people who are consumed man but I'm just crazy enough to believe we can pray in this house of the Lord and God can shake another house I, 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 I believe that I, yeah 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 I know how it works I know how it works y'all because when, when you start speaking truth to people they get mad at you they don't want to hear nothing you saying. I'm telling you. But pray that you ask God, God, you shake that house. You shake that life. You turn them around, God. They won't hear me, but God, do what you need to do short of taking their life, God. Hallelujah. Young people, any of y'all in them codependent relationships, you need to be at the altar. I don't want to know who it is. I don't know want to know what it is. I just want to know, is there something or somebody you need to shake? And if that's the case, if there's a fear you need to shake, come on, let's get it done. Some of you who are seasoned saints. Learn to be all right by yourself. 
enjoy them when they come to see you, but be just as happy when they don't come to see you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because if, 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 you, if, if, if you live to be happy just when they, you see them, they will control your happiness. This ain't nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, I, I come to set the captives free. I come to set them free. I come to set them free. Now, if you need Jesus as the center of your life, because it's only by being saved and by having the abiding presence of the Holy Ghost that you can make a declaration and it's going to stick. You hear what I'm saying? Because if you make a declaration without Jesus as Lord of your life and without the power of the Holy Ghost, it's going to last as long until you get out this door. So if you need to be saved today, let's take care of that. If you're ready to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, let's, 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 let's take care of that. If you're backslidden and you need restoration, come on. Come on. I ain't got no judgment. I don't have no condemnation. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Get a turn. I believe God is moving stumbling blocks today. I believe God is moving hindering spirits today. In the name of Jesus, I believe God is bringing refreshing today. I believe God is bringing renewal today. I believe God is giving you new focus today. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Today, 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 whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The wall rise up against me. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I need some saints. Maybe you haven't prayed like this for a while, but come on. We're going to pray them on through today. We're going to pray them on out. We're going to pray them on over today. Glory to God. We're praying for God to lift burdens. We're praying for God to deliver folk. We're praying for God to restore right minds. We're praying for God to restore self-esteem. Feelings of self-worth. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan been manipulating, manipulating so long, but at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, demons got to tremble. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, we know the persons, the personalities who have been troubling people, but call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Move from a child, God. Move from a brother. Move from a sister. Move in my mind. Move, God. Yeah, move, God. Move. Move, God. Touch, heal, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. You've not given us the spirit of fear, the power and love and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Every shackle got to be broken. Every chain got to fall off. In the name of Jesus, every one of your children who's crying out, 
I know you're answering the room right now. I know you're healing right now. I know you're touching. I know you're setting free right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, some of us have been in bondage so long that we've forgotten what freedom is. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Create in those beings a clean heart and renew the right spirit within them, God. Give them a spirit that pants for you and not for that person. They've developed that codependent relationship with. Set free today. Set free. Set free. Set free. Set free today. Set free today. Break the shackles, God. Shackles on our bodies. Shackles on our minds. Shackles on our spirits. Oppressive shackles. Break the shackles. Hallelujah. 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 Do the work, God. Do the work. 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 Thank you for the blood. 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 Blood over my home. Blood over my mind. Blood over my children. Blood over my family members. Blood over my car, blood over every mile I got to try. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood over my spirit. The blood over my emotions. Thank you for the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood that shields us, the Lord, blood that protects us, the blood that insulates us. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for covering my mind in the blood. So I won't worry like I have worried. So I won't obsess like I have been obsessive. Thank you for covering my mind. In the name of Jesus. Woo! God, we are not praying, doubting. We're not praying, wondering. But we're praying in faith. And we're counting it done. We are counting it done. We are counting it done. We are counting it done. And as surely as we have declared it and decreed it right now, the signs and wonders will follow. The signs and wonders will follow when we go to work this week. The signs and wonders will follow when we go home. The signs and wonders will follow when we deal with those things that used to be pitfalls. Hallelujah. Woo! In the name of Jesus. Well, you're free now, but I want just about five people who, who, who are willing to take the risk. It could be more than five, but five people who are saying, okay, I'm going to stay at this altar. I'm going to come to the altar. I don't know what pastor get ready to do, 
but I'm trusting you, God. So I'm going to stay at the altar. The rest of you, if your, your, your back is hurting, your knees hurting and all of that, amen, you feel the need to be seated, please go on and be seated. I just need a few people to stay at the altar or come to the altar. I started to not do this because, because um, to, to be very transparent, amen, in the flesh, amen, my, my, my body, you know, hurting my back, amen, but the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, my body, including my back, belong to God. My whole body belong to God. Now all of y'all might not be able to do this, but I'm taking my next month's 71 year old frame down on this floor and I'm going to do one victory lap for Jesus. Anybody who want to, you can come on and follow me. I'm running for my life. Broadcasting today. We're gonna keep on broadcasting today. We got baptism. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're getting ready for baptism, but ah. Woo! Woo! Leave that liar alone! Leave that thief alone! Leave him 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 alone! Ooh! Ooh! Hossie! Yellow. Oh, she had it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is my story. This is my song 
praising my Savior all the day long. Saints, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I have a story, I have a song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I have a story, saints. I have a song. Praising my Savior. All the day long. Hallelujah.